This is the iconic ox hidingen. Produced in the period between 1600 and 1000 BC, it is one of the best recognized artifact types of the Bronze Age Mediterranean. While some ingots were made of tin, the majority were copper. The two metals were combined to make bulk bronze, which was later recast into different objects, ranging from various domestic implements, to weapons, armor, prestige items like jewelry, skillfully polished mirrors, as well as objects of religious significance. Weighing 30 kilograms on average, it is thought that these ingots were cast in stone and clay molds. Their shape and protruding handles would facilitate the transport on the backs of pack animals as well as by hand. However, these artifacts are most often associated with large-scale maritime trade. The most famous example of this is the 14th century BC Ulubrun shipwreck found off the southwestern coast of Turkey in 1982. Among numerous high-value items like golden and amber jewelry, ebony and expensive ceramics, the ship's cargo hold contained over 10 tons of copper and a ton of tin in the form of ingots. Though the exact source of the copper is still debated, it is assumed that the traders were transporting metal from Cyprus westwards, possibly to Crete or the Aegean Islands. The origins of numerous other pure or allied copper artifacts made throughout the Bronze Age were traced back by archaeological scientists. But how did they do that? Where the direct analysis of the artifact fails, the trace amounts of lead in the copper can be studied to reveal the place of its manufacture. This approach is called lead isotope analysis. So we use lead isotope analysis to determine the provenance of the objects in the archaeological context because the, each geological mining, each lead deposit has a specific uh, isotopic ratio, a specific lead isotopic ratio depending on the geological age. So we can match the objects in the archaeological context with the mines in the region. And to do the analysis, we need to extract a small sample from the archaeological objects, either from the ores, the slugs, or the proper objects. So we have either to crush the sample or to extract a small sample from the object to have a small amount of powder. The sample is then sent to the laboratory, where it is analyzed using inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, or ICPMS. I'm running materials on the ICPMS, um, which takes an aqueous solution of the material, which has been digested in acid uh, previously, um, that is then sprayed into the chamber, into the plasma, which is here. Um, all the elements are, are broken apart to the different um, isotopes, and um, they're conducted um, through a series of magnetic lenses um, into a detector, which measures their mass to charge ratios and allows us to um, create a very large multi, um, uh, multi element compositional patterns, especially for uh, trace elements, rare earth elements, and things like that. However, doubts have been expressed on the effectiveness of the analysis, because unlike iron, copper and its alloys can be easily melted together. So the main problem that we have with lead isotope analysis is if different ores from different deposits have been mixed together, either in the smelting process using different resources or in the recycling of objects. So different provenances can be mixed in a, in a, in a different uh, isotopic ratio. Some archaeologists are concerned that due to the intense economic activity in the later Bronze Age, the copper from sources like Cyprus, Sardinia and eastern Turkey became so mixed that it will be impossible to pinpoint any individual manufacturers of the raw material. While it is indeed true for various copper and bronze objects that were manufactured all across Eurasia, there is little evidence of copper pooling in mining and ingot production centers. Even if mixing occurred on a minor scale, there are ways to untangle the isotopic signature. So if a lot of different objects have been mixed together or the recycling has been very intense, it's going to be very difficult to determine the specific provenance. But if only two different deposits or two different objects has been mixed together, then we can find a mixing line between these two ore deposits that we can determine that these two ores were mixed together.
Using lead isotope analysis, archaeologists were even able to pinpoint the exact deposit that dominated the production of late Bronze Age ingots, the Apliki mine in central Cyprus. This, and similar discoveries in provenance studies of ingots and other copper-based objects, could provide us with invaluable information on the trade connections, societal changes, and shifting power relations in the Mediterranean region, which integrated numerous other parts of Europe, Asia, and Africa in the world's first international arena of ideological and material exchange.